Okay, so for one, I dyed my hair. Two, this is not going to be um, a normal ASMR video, as you can tell by how I'm talking. Um, this is going to be my story that I've been wanting to share with you, and I made the video, and then I deleted it because I wasn't ready. But I'm ready now. <laughs> um, this is not me putting it out there for pity for people to um, sympathy, I guess. It's not anything like that. I'm putting it out here because getting my story out is going to help me drastically um, move on with my life. And some of you might not think it's a big deal, and that's okay. Um, but to me, it is a big deal, and it's ruined my life for three years, and I'm finally, um, I finally got the courage to share. <laughs> so, um, I guess I'll just get started. For one, I dyed my hair with shampoo. I was blonde and then I put red in it. It kind of looks more hot pinky, but it's red. This folder contains everything um, that I've been through for the past three years and it's basically over. It's in the last processing type of thing. Um, yeah, so. Okay. Three years ago, I went to Nevada to visit family, my grandparents, and um, I went to a hairdresser with my grandpa, he wanted to take me and my little sister to get our hair done as a surprise. Um, so we went into this hair salon place and um, I was a full brunette at the time and um, I told her I wanted to go blonde. So she basically told me that she would just highlight my hair, highlight the crap out of it. And, um, yeah, <laughs> this is not something easy for me to put out here, talk about, so I'm sorry if it seems like scattered. I just, okay. So, um, she puts my hair in foils and she then puts me under a heating lamp and for those who don't know what a heating lamp is it's basically a, um, a covering that kind of covers the majority of your head and it's hot you turn it on and it starts getting hot because I guess it's supposed to warm up the product to make it process faster I'm not a hairdresser so if anyone is you can correct you can whatever but that's just what I know or I think I know um, anyway, so, not even five minutes, I'm under the heat lamp, and I start seeing smoke, and my head starts to burn, and I mean, it was burning, and I yelled to my hairdresser, um, and I was like, you gotta get these foils out, it's hurting, like, they're hot, get these foils out, get them out, get them out, and, um, she started taking her time really slow like she's just like oh whatever so I actually started taking the foils out myself and um she put me under the sink rinsed me and my head was throbbing and I mean throbbing um it left marks on my head And, um, my head was throbbing, 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 throbbing. 
I went, I went back to my grandparents' house, you know, like, showed them my hair, explained to them what happened, and I actually had to take, like, Benadryl and medicine to help with the pain, and I had to put ice on my head, my top part, um, because it was, it hurt so bad. And the next day, I woke up, and my head, let's see if you can see that, um, I don't know if you can tell, but those, those pink lines, let's see if I turn it this way, oh, there we go, you can see it a little better. Those pink lines are, it burned me. And then the next few days, my forehead swelled up. I don't know if you can tell, but like there's that little indent. My forehead literally was swollen. Like you could press it and your hand would like leave an indent. And then it kind of went down to my nose and I looked like something from Avatar. Like I looked like that creature from Avatar. So we get back to town about a week later because I was there for my spring break. I was a freshman in college, 19 years old, and um, just wanted to get my hair done. So it happened right here. And after we got back, I noticed it started to blister up and get really gooey. Oh, this is a picture of me getting the foils on. Happy, you know, getting my hair done. Um, anyway, so, um, I, we were back in town and my fore, my, my head was getting really, um, blistery and gooey and like really gross. Like it was, it was nasty. Um, this is what it looked like. It was infected, and so I went to the doctors, and, you know, they, um, explained it as a chemical burn. I've never heard of a chemical burn. I never experienced a chemical burn, and I've gotten my hair dyed numerous times. Like, I, I love dyeing my hair, so I didn't think anything bad was going to happen going to a hairdresser in a different, you know, different state. I mean, I didn't think anything of it. I mean, I was just going to get my hair done. So, anyway, he, he explained it as a chemical burn, and um, I was like, okay, well... I have these blisters on my head now, and my hair started to fall out. It started to fall out, and I... It started to look like this. And... And it went to this. A raw, bloody spot. My hair officially fell out. And now I was dealing with this raw, gooey, bloody spot on my head. That was extremely painful. I had to go to three doctors. They each prescribed me new medication every time it pro progressively got worse. And, um, I just had to try to keep moving forward. And it was almost impossible being a college student, 19 years old. My hair was falling out. I had this bloody bald spot on the top of my head now. And I didn't know what to do. So then I have to pull up the picture um, I posted it. So after it was really bloody and gooey, it turned into this. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. Let's see. Can maybe darken the lighting. Yeah. 
it was just a a bald spot and it was like this thick right here and it was a bald spot and if you would touch my hair you'd feel the indent of where I had no hair and I normally parted my hair you know like this and if I did this way it would show so I had to learn how to re part and train my hair to do this because as you can see this chunk of hair covers anything that would be right there so I had to restyle my hair differently I had to relearn how to do everything you know differently with my hair I had to um, use a lot of hairspray I had to use teasing methods because I had to tease it and make it not covered but um so now I'm, I'm left with this bald spot like this big and I saw my last doctor and she recommended a surgeon to me so I have I've had three surgeries and basically those surgeries were he would cut so pretend this is my head and here's the bald spot he would cut pieces out of the bald spot and so he'd take it off and he would pull together my sides of my head to make the spot smaller. And every time after surgery, I, I was awake for everything. Obviously, I'm numbed up. He would use three to four needles. Probably the needle itself was like this long. And he'd go under my scalp and dig it in and numb up my head. And those were so excruciatingly painful that I would sob every time he would do it. Every single time. And I had to go through that three different times. Um, so, you know, he would take chunks, you know, and everything. And so by removing a chunk of my scalp and pulling the sides together, it made my head extremely tight. So tight that I couldn't even move my head down or raise my eyebrows without pain shooting. And I literally just had to sit, like, with a pillow behind my feet up and, like, um, on pillows because I had to just lay there for a week I was bedridden and then after it would heal you know the spot got smaller and smaller and smaller but unfortunately because it's my scalp your scalp re-stretches to like you know go back to place so I am still left with a scar on my head this is what I'm left with and yes it is a lot smaller than what it was yes I am extremely grateful for how it looks and I thank God that I was able to get those surgeries but what I've been through the past three years emotionally mentally everything has been so so hard that I've literally had to relearn how to love myself and the way I am and relearn that this scar on the top of my head does not define who I am it does not define my beauty it does not define anything about me and that this scar does not control me and that was really really hard for me to accept and it's been three years and I finally am getting there finally you know being a girl being 19 just a freshman in college and having all this happen to me was probably the hardest thing I have ever been through the surgeries the everything the pain I've been through emotionally I just you know I've never been the same since and it's I'm slowly learning to regain my confidence and everything back because it has not been um an easy three years it has you know not been easy whatsoever and I'll always have this scar on my head as a reminder of what I've been through and as a reminder of what could happen if you go to a place with people who aren't of high standards. Don't get me wrong, the place itself didn't seem sketchy, the woman didn't seem sketchy, but I just, 
if my story gets out there and my story helps other people, I want to be able to help people. I want to be able to say, you know, you're not alone. This has happened to me and I want to be there for other people because this is not something that is easy to deal with, especially being a girl. And I know guys would have it hard too, but being a female, many girls are really wrapped up with your, their hair. They want to feel pretty and everything. So it was definitely a really hard thing for me to go through and I still will go through it every single day of my life because after three surgeries, this is the best that he can get it. And I am just extremely grateful for it to be this size and I am now going to try to live my life how I want to and even though getting my hair done really freaks me out now I don't want to be scared but I only use as of lately I only use shampoo to color my hair because I'm too scared to really go back to a hair salon um and get my hair done because I mean it happened once it makes me freak out and think it could happen again because you hear stories and you're like oh that'll never happen to me well I didn't think this could ever happen to me I didn't even know this a chemical burn existed um maybe it's just because I'm naive but I now know things can happen even if you don't think they could ever happen to you because this happened to me and it was a very real experience it was a very painful experience it's taught me a lot but it's made me who I am today and I feel like I am ready to just move on and I think that's why I wanted to share my story and this if this helps others I will be so extremely grateful and happy to be able to have reached out and touched other people because that's what I want that's what I want to do um, I'm open for any questions or any comments you can just leave them below um, don't be afraid to ask anything. I mean, I'm, like I said, I'm not doing this for pity. I'm doing it for myself to move on, to fully let go, to let people know what I've been through and to let people know that, you know, shit happens and it could happen to you. And if someone else is going through the same thing or if someone else has gone through the same thing, I would love to connect and, you know, all that good stuff but once again sorry this wasn't like an ASMR whisper video I just would not be able to whisper all this and make it sound make it sound good but um I'm really happy I finally was able to get my story out there and <laughs> um talk to you guys but um I will appreciate any comments or anything support whatever you want to give me um just know this was not an easy thing for me to do and I really hope you guys can understand but anyway thank you for your guys' support I love you all um yeah I'm gonna go to bed now but thank you for watching thank you for if you're if you've stuck with it thank you for watching the whole video and being supportive <laughs> but all right bye guys